Hi, my name is Sherry Lash, and I've been asked by the Cedar Falls Historical Society if I would share about my um, thimbles and pincushions um, collection that I have. I'm uh, grateful for the opportunity, and I hope you uh, enjoy my collection today. Um, I have a rich heritage in um, needle art, sewing, anything that had to do with making, making do. Um, I come from a whole line of farmer's wives and um, all the women um, that I was closely associated with in my growing up years um, made things. And um, that was everything from sewing um, to knitting to crocheting um, to embroidery. Um, these women did it all. And so I grew up with that surrounding me um, from a very young age. So in sharing that today, a part of what we use for implements um, is obviously thimbles and pin cushions. And um, I'm gonna t first talk about thimbles. Um, I don't have a huge collection, um, and actually I kind of stopped actively collecting them uh, several years ago just because um, I had filled my space with them and um, just decided that what I had was just fine. And so I uh, just wanted to share just a little bit about the history of thimbles. Um, the first thimble that they know of was made in 1695 by a Dutch metal worker and it was called a thumb bell which is, I think is kind of interesting. And they're typically made from everything from metal to glass to leather, um, whalebone even. And um, so I'll just share just a few of uh, the things that I have. Um, I have advertising ones. I have metal ones, ceramic ones. Um, a lot of them are places that we have traveled and, um, you know, like souvenir type things and obviously advertising ones. I've got uh, several up here in this top row that are ceramic ones and they're really not usable, um, but my maternal grandma, um, I'll call her Grandma Ruth, um, she did ceramics and so uh, she made all three of these in the top in the top row there. And then um, I have uh, this little tree and uh, um, I love this tree. Uh, this was a gift from my mother when you're at Christmas time and it rotates and then it's got this adorable little um, carved thimble. This is all made out of walnut um, in the top and then it's got these little um, pegs that you set your thimbles on. And uh, a, one of my favorites on here is an advertising one called Evergreen Hatchery. And um, that was a business that my great grandma, uh, Flora Calmer, started and her sons worked with her. And that was really a cottage industry um, over several towns um, uh, back in that day. And uh, so I have a couple uh, thimbles from there, and I have various pieces in my house that are evergreen hatchery. Um, but a lot of these are from our travels, uh, one to Germany. Here's a crystal one I have. Um, I've got some metal ones that are really beautiful. Um, most of these really are functional. Um, I would say they're more decorative than they are uh, practical. Uh, but they're still very fun and they bring back uh, a lot of good memories. And then I'm wearing um, a sterling silver one that my mother made, uh, not made for me, but bought for me as a gift. And I um, have a little thimble cage. And this one actually uh, I think would work just fine to use. I don't happen to use this one, um, but you certainly I think could. Um, and then I think probably, the, I believe this is the last thimble I bought, and I see it's dated 2011 um, from the Czech Village, and that was in Cedar Rapids. 
and I got that because it was so heavily painted. It was different, I knew, than what, I, um, what the other ones I had. And um, uh, my uh, great-grandmother, Rose Fisher Weaver, um, came from Czechoslovakia when she was, I think, about three years old. Um, and so uh, we do have Czech heritage, and so that was kind of why I bought that particular one. But I think that's really the last one um, I purchased. Um, then there's also, and we'll, I'll kind of show you just like this, um, and I'll talk, maybe talk about this again, but like this is a pin cushion, but here's a little thimble case built right into it, which is kind of clever. And uh, yeah, so it just hangs there. Um, and then this pin cushion is shaped like a thimble. And my grandma Ruth, um, who did ceramics, made that. Um, and that was always near her sewing machine um, after she made those. So that really is most of the extent um, of my thimbles. Um, and then pin cushions, um, I probably am a little more actively interested in them um, as I. I still like pin cushions and I'm making them and I'll show you a couple of my recent uh, ones. And their uh, origins date clear back to the Middle Ages and then they, um, uh, a written uh, context was in 1376 when a man was bequeathed a silver pin case um, in a French text that was uh, considered what would be like a pin pillow. So, um, I mean, these, all of these implements are very, very old. Um, and many of them are filled with cotton, wool, horse hair, sawdust, uh, walnut shells, uh, emery, uh, various things. So they can be filled with, um, you know, various, things to whatever I think people had on hand at the time. I'll share stories of, I guess, some of my favorite ones here. Um, I've got quite a few crocheted ones, and um, most of these I've either picked up at antique stores or maybe even at auctions. Um, and like I typically really don't know the stories behind them. I've got several here that my grandma Meldred made. Um, I know this is one of hers and she is my paternal grandmother. Um, and here's this sweet little one with crocheted little flowers on it. Um, and then this one, this one was one that I would guess my grandma, great grandma Rose made. Um, I remember my grandma Calmer having this, Grandma Mildred, and it's like a little hat. You, so the pin cushions go here, the needles would go here, and then here's a little dangle here with um, the thimble right stuck into it. So um, very clever, and you know they crocheted and made all these things work. Um, this was also um, one of the ones that my grandma had, and this was like a sunbonnet suitcase, and you open it up with a, a little snap, and inside was these little pages um, that you put your pins or your needles in. Um, this one is very interesting. Um, it has a chicken wishbone in it, and this I know um, I got in an auction box. And um, I got the box specifically for this one because I thought it was so interesting. Um, so it's crocheted around a wishbone of a chicken and, uh, and then the pin cushion hangs down. Um, then there's many of these heart style um, ones and I love these. And these sometimes were like a crossover. I think they um, would hang them and maybe even put hat pins in them. Sometimes um, I've got a couple different ones of them. 
And these I both got, I think, at antique stores. Uh, I don't think either one of those are family, um, but they could be pins or needles or whatever um, in them. Uh, this one is uh, my uh, utilitarian one, and I keep it because my grandma Mildred made this one. And I have used this as my working um, pin cushion for a really long time. So you can see I've got safety pins and threaded needles and, um, and it's just a crocheted one out of yarn and really not anything special except that she made it for me and I've used it for years. Um, I've got some very old examples too. This one is a, a little box and it's called to toilet pins and there's holes and then these little black, you can just see the heads of the pins sticking out um, and glass headed pins. Um, so very fine quality um, back in the day. And I really don't know the age on this. It does say Germany, but my guess is uh, possibly turn of the century or maybe even a little bit full before then. Um, this is something too that I've had um, this was in my great grandmother's things, and this is a little sewing kit, and it looks like a little bullet, actually, type thing. And there's a place to put needles. There's thread wrapped around here, and it all fits in this little case with this little tassel. So you maybe would have carried that in your purse as a, um, uh, you know, a little emergency sewing kit. And this was one. My grandma Mildred always had too, and she would show it to me. Kind of clever. It's got the pins in cork with the thimble in the center of it. So you can kind of see how some of these things cross over. Um, this one uh, is a needle roll, they call, and I made this one. Um, it's on linen, cross stitched. Um, I don't really have pins in it, it's more decorative to me. Uh, than anything, um, but it's got beads and buttons and it's a pat has a patriotic um, theme to it um, and it is one of my favorites. I, I enjoyed working on that. Um, this one down here is uh, a, like a needle roll and I'm always amazed every time I go to a uh, museum a lot of times in a, and particularly if it has to do with uh, wartime and soldiers, um, there almost always <clears throat> is a sewing kit um, shown, a needle roll type thing that a soldier would take. And this is basically, um, it's a pattern um, that I bought at a Civil War reenactment. And this was taken off a Civil War soldier. And he happened to be a Confederate uh, soldier. He was killed in the Battle of Kennesaw Mountain down in Georgia. And, um, but I, unfortunately, he probably wouldn't be very happy with me. I made it more as a union. I didn't make it as a Confederate um, one, but um, I did copy the pattern. And so I've got some great um, patriotic kind of vintage looking um, fabrics. I've got wool down here for your needle um, to put needles in, and then I've got a little strawberry emery that I crocheted, and then um, I do I copied the picture. This was found on the man's body, and his name was um, George Tilly Birch, um, and he passed away in 1864. Um, like I say in the Battle of Kennesaw Mountain, so. Um, this is kind of a cool piece, and I embroidered the name just like his was. His mother would have probably made this for him um, when he was sent off to war. And um, I did include, this is something extra I added, the, kind of some floss minders um, that I crocheted in here. And then I added some pins with my initial and a little star. Um, and then the USA, it had the Confederate States of America on beadwork in here. So, um, like I say, I changed it up to um, be more union, but it's still kind of a neat historical piece. And then in more modern day um, 
uh, pin cushion. Here is little house. I've got a whole little set of them. Uh, small, medium, and large. These are filled with walnut shells, crushed walnut shells, which is what I use today to fill my pin cushions that I make. And it's just done in 30s fabric and they're with these little houses, which are too cute. Um, and then I've been doing some more uh, cross stitch as of, as of late and um, using up some things that I had. And this is one of the last ones I have done. And um, it's a, just a little Amish design that I had a chart for. And I happened to come up with um, some Amish fabric. So here's a buggy and a horse um, with seams on it. Um, and I made this kind of in a, and it's made with walnut shells. I personally really like the pin cushions that are, they feel weighted, they have a weight to them. And then the other offshoot of that is, I kind of look for pit, um, pins that relate to the, um, to the whatever the design is going on here. So um, I got two hearts here for the two people, and then I've got these are little flowers, so they're they're stuck in the uh, meadow here. And uh, so I've done that with uh, several different pin cushions if I happen to find pins that relate to them. Uh, this is another one more modern day. Um, this is not filled with walnut shells, and I wished it kind of was, but um, this is uh, kind of a folk arty uh, one that I did with uh, wools and a cute little bunny rabbit, some decorative stitches on my uh, sewing machine, rick rack, Merle, uh, mother of pearl buttons. Um, so just, you know, a very fun way of using little bits of scraps. Um, then these little chickens, super cute. Um, this one is done with uh, a little log cabin, two log cabin blocks, and um, the way you sew it together, it's got a little tail for the chicken. And then here's an itty bitty one that's just got the uh, same style, uh, just very tiny. This one is filled with um, walnut shells and this one is just stuffing. I like the feel of the heavier one better. So um, it's just a preference I have. Um, then um, this one is um, new to me. It was a gift and um, I love this. It's a drum style. It says pins on it. Um, done in linen and stitched over two threads. It's just beautifully finished um, by a friend. And then um, it just fits. I happen to have one of these holes down by my sewing machine and it kind of just fits in there with my scissors um, hanging around it. So that's an idea if you happen to see these were florist bowls. They're readily available at the um, at the uh, thrift, like thrift stores, you can find them. And so it's kind of a fun way of uh, using a thrift store find. Um, then this piece is, I like to go to auctions. And um, this was from an estate, um, several, oh, I think a couple years ago. And the gal was a quilter and um, I, I didn't see it at the time, but it, they lifted it up and I, it was across the room. And all I could see was these holes from across the room. And I thought that looks like ivory or bone to me. It looked old. And so I bought it from across the room without really looking at it. And here it's, it's a little walnut chest and it was missing uh, some of these little uh, pieces. And, um, and so I took it to my dad, who's a woodworker, and lo and behold, and it had this funny knob on the top that I didn't know what it was. The lid was broken. And here my dad looked up and found like the exact, pretty much the exact replica. And this top was a pin cushion and it was missing that part. And so um, he replicated the little points that were missing 
and fixed it all up, glued the top, and so I've got spools of thread with thread coming out of each hole, and then I made the little pin cushion on the top. And then here again, I found some fancy pins that I thought it deserved to have some fancy pins in it. So this was frankly a very cheap buy and my dad kind of restored it and brought it back to its um, former glory, um, I would say. And I love that piece. Um, a few other things that I have that are real of a practical nature is um, a girlfriend um, probably 20 years ago made this for me and so it's not old per se but it's got a pin cushion here with a magnet you can put your needles here and then a waste basket to throw your threads so this is down by my sewing machine and I use this you know almost every day I've got several needle cases some that are quite old um, others that are you know, a little bit newer. My guess is this is like a 40s one. And, uh, you know, they're in various states of condition. This one is, that's hand stitched. It's an elephant. It's like, kind of like out of, uh, I don't know what the paper is, like an oil cloth maybe. And then it's got flannel and wool inside. Um, somebody made this. I, this isn't family, so I, I'm assuming I picked it up in an uh, auction box at some point. Um, oh, and then the, here is uh, this one. Um, this is one I use every day. I don't have a traditional red tomato uh, pin cushion, which many times you see, but this is like that and it's pink and I use it for needles and I mark which kind of needle I have in my sewing machine and then these are used needles. So that's how I keep track of maybe needles that have been used for a little bit but they're not, I'm not ready to throw them away. And so this is, it's all marked with certain needles and that's how I keep track of them. And then here's another thing. This happens to be a Lannenberger basket with a pillow in it that came like this. And I've got like some big corsage pins, or I think this, these are hat pins. And I have used these um, on my dresser and I put my rings on them sometimes when I just want to uh, keep track. I don't want to put them away. Um, so that's an idea you could even use with a pin cushion uh, to use something maybe special that you already have. So this is um, most of what I have here. Um, here's a little, I guess, a newer one I haven't talked about. This was a gift from a friend. And there again, um, this has got some bees and flowers that happen to be red, white, and blue. Um, and so I added them to this red, white, and blue uh, pin cushion. So, that is my uh, collection of pin cushions and thimbles. And um, I hope you enjoyed um, my sharing them with you today. And I thank you for this opportunity uh, to visit with you. And um, I do have a uh, live video um, group on Facebook. If you are interested in that, it's called Mama Quilts and Crafts. And uh, I would love to see some of you um, have us have you join us. Um, we have a good time. Uh, usually every week I do a live video. So if you like these kinds of things, and I even do tutorials and other things, um, look me up on Facebook and I would love to have you join me. Thank you and bye for now.